test, test, testing, 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 test, ickles, testing, 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 test, ickles, testing, testing, test, ickles, test, ickles. Welcome everyone to episode 754 of the Daily Mother Us. Wow, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broadcast, game cast, man cast, pimp cast, sleaze cast, slay cast, and jacked cast. In the realm, because when I drink, you drink, we all drink coffee and flex our biceps. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the game train. Hello, toot toot. The conductor is waving at you. Oh, 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 oh. You can't see it because of the microphone. And the microphone is so freaking huge to eclipse the gains. What's going on? Ring the bell on Instagram. Hello. What's going on? Lynn, Eric, the team is showing up. Ooh, look at what we got now on Facebook. You guys see, do you guys see what I'm seeing on your mobile devices? I'm seeing on Facebook, it says top fan. Oh, that's cool for live broadcasting. It's going to start showing frequent flyer miles. Look at you guys. Top fan. Can I click on that? It says, top fan, having this badge helps you stand out to the page and others. You can become a top fan by being one of the most active people on a page. Ooh, you like that? Listen to that on Facebook. That's, oh, that's really cool. Oh, see the community. I, I want to click see the community, but I, I'm, I'm going to wait till later because I don't want it to take me off this page and all of a sudden it kills my live broadcast. Oh, I like that. I like that update. I wonder if everyone sees that. Make sure you make sure you update your your Facebook page. That's huge. You know what's that's I'm actually blown away because I did not expect to see that. I'm usually on top of all the latest, but I just noticed that. That's fantastic because I've always wanted. I see the names that I normally see, especially on all the platforms. When you're tuning in, when you say hi, I notice names that are there frequently. It just makes sense, especially when you comment. Uh, so it, it helps. I think it's great. I think it's great for you to get recognized too. I mean, you're putting in the time you're here, you're live, you're participating, you're asking good questions. I think that's far out. So very good update. I like that a lot. I think YouTube's had something like that for a while in their live chatter, super chatters or super posts or something like that, but I'm not seeing anything pop up on the YouTubes yet. Top chat, live chat. I want to make sure the live chat's active. Okay. That was weird. All right, and welcome Twitch. So let me just intro the show for a moment. Uh, those of you that are new, this is a quadcast, so live on Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So Papa Swellio is everywhere. And this is episode 754, so we have muchos episodios for you to catch up on, and you can listen to those on SoundCloud and Apple Podcast. And this is Wednesday. If it's West Coast, it's probably about 11 o'clock, so everyone's taking their second or third coffee break. Everyone's getting that lunchtime coffee, ready for the second half grind. And um, a couple of good things that are coming today. We're going to talk a little bit about bench press today. I want to talk about six reasons to avoid the classic barbell bench. And we're going to talk a little bit about chesticles today because today is hump day. And I'm talking about the man humps. I'm talking the, about the man titties, the man chesticles, and the woman chesticles. We'll talk about the pectoralis major. We'll talk about the chesticles. Uh, today of uh, males and females alike. So everyone's welcome when we talk about the um, the titties. And uh, we'll follow up a little bit. I'll also be taking some questions. If there's any questions, I've been getting a bunch of my DM and also on Facebook. Those of you that have checked out that full body or full upper body workout that I posted on YouTube, Swole Normous X members, everyone has seen this at this point, Daily Swole Club. We did a, a, a dip tutorial uh, the other day. Today is going to be probably another exercise breakdown. So those of you that are in the Messenger Daily Swole Club on Facebook Messenger, if there's any other questions on that workout, I'm happy to take them, but we're going to talk about chest. So uh, those of you that are just coming in now, if it's your virgin cast, say hi. I looked at the the last, last night, I think you got about on my list. What do you mean my list? Oh, you mean my Oh, there's a list for top fans. Oh, learning from you show up when you pop up. Hell yeah, Deborah. I'm glad. Well, not everyone can show up when I pop up because Papa Swolio has been on the, uh, I've been on the custom tip. I've been on the custom, the custom showtime. I've been popping up whenever I feel like popping up. 
just blew out chess today. What's up, fam? Okay, so apparently there's a top list. I'm going to uh, I'm going to check out that that frequent flyer uh, list. Didn't Periscope do something? I think Periscope did do something like that. Like you had different shapes of hearts or different colors or something like that. Uh, Virgin Swolio, it's your vir- Virgin Swole. What's up, Kim Fika on Instagram? So if it's your first time joining, say hi. And remember, it's a podcast as well. So if you want to listen to the other episodes, it's great to listen to while you're doing your cardio. If you do that kind of stuff while you walk the dog and do the dishes and all that. So it's great to catch up on previous episodes. Let's get into the show today. The top six reasons, I shouldn't say top six reasons. Here are just six reasons. And we're going to have a conversation about it. We'll talk about, we'll break these things down. And we're talking chest today. We're talking titties. We're talking male and female titties. We're talking chesticles. And um, those of you that tried the chesticle challenge that I posted on Sunday over Memorial Day weekend with the watermelon, trust me, if you, if you get your chance, get your hands on a melon, it's not as e- it's not easy. I didn't even get the full minute. That was a heavy watermelon. It was really good, by the way. It was really, it was a really juicy one. Uh, but it is not easy. It is not easy, especially if you get a nice, a weird shaped one and one that's really heavy. That's what she said. So let's get into the six reasons why uh, you can back off the barbell bench. Now, when we talk about barbell bench, when I say barbell, for those of you that might be real noobs, which is cool, a barbell is just a single bar. It's a barbell. Okay, it's called that. Who cares why it's called that? But it's a single bar. The dumbbells are the individual weights. So the dumbbells are two weights and the bar is one weight, essentially one piece, one unit. And one of the reasons why you can ditch the barbell is because the bar doesn't stimulate as much from an aspect of proprioception of neuromuscular coordination. Now, if you're trying to push raw weight and see how strong you can get, there's a reason why max repetitions are done with a bar. It's easier to spot if there's multiple spotters. And I'll get to that point because that's a downside of the barbell as well. Uh, if you have proper spotting, it can be it, it, it can be safer if you have it properly spotted, like in a powerlifting competition or a strength competition. And also, uh, when it comes to motor unit recruitment, when it comes to raw absolute force, it's easier to push on one object than it is on two. However, from a bodybuilding hypertrophy standpoint, size aesthetics approach, you have more freedom with dumbbells. Okay, you have more freedom with dumbbells. It's it saves space in people's houses. It can be it can allow for more range of motion, and there's more stability and there's more stabilization required for two weights rather than one. And you think about it, you're holding two weights, and those of you that have done a lot of barbell and go to dumbbell, you're going to notice the difference. All of a sudden, you might be a little shaky, you might be a little rickety. But likewise, if you do dumbbells all the time and then you go to barbell, it's going to feel shaky and kind of a little bit weird. It's just the awkward response from the body from doing something that you're not used to doing however it will be more unstable going from the bar to the dumbbells rather than the dumbbells to the bar and it's just more things to control but you get more range of motion and you can customize your grip position and your your posture better or more there's more i guess customization you can move how your body and your shoulders can position themselves where it's most comfortable your wrists and so forth you're not locked into position with a bar So that's one of the reasons. Next reason is similar to that locking up position is a scapular locked. When you're doing a, and this can, you can literally have this conversation with dumbbell bench. This is kind of a general bench uh, proposition is that you are putting pressure, putting pressure on the connective tissue and the fascial tissue and the scapular movement against the, or the thoraco um, scapular joint, how the scapula actually slides along the back of the rib cage. When you are in a supine position on a bench, you're putting pressure on that tissue. You're affecting the ability of the body to retract and protract the scapula. As much as you're able to perform this movement, it's more at the shoulder joint rather than the scapula because you're unable to fully, I guess, benefit from range of motion because of the pressure, because of the impingement, because of the inhibition and the pressure on the back um, when the bench is against the body. So that can be a problem that can relate to people's injuries or discomfort in the shoulder. Like when people have shoulder pain, I'm not saying that this is always the reason, but 
part of the reason why there can be shoulder pain is inflammation due to smaller space in the shoulder because of an imbalance, right? The shoulder, the humerus is internally rotated or there's a scapular elevation. So there's less subacromial space, all these issues that can lead to inflammation and issues in the shoulder long-term, right? Um, that's from sitting down, being at a computer, doing too much bench pressing, shoulder pressing, front raises, curls, all this stuff, always to the front texting. And then, you know, we're talking about, you know, full in comparison to full postural stability and the exact opposite of what most human beings do and most Americans especially do. Uh, so when we are uh, talking about locking the scapula and allowing for uh, full movement, that can be a downside. That can be a downside that actual free movement of the thoracic or the scapular thoracic joint there um, could be a reason why you might have shoulder pain. So if you have limited space and you have more rotation, uh, internal rotation, for example, with the upper arm, you might have some more friction. And if you're not getting that kind of scapular movement, you could be causing more stress in that joint, which could cause pain and feeling of like, you know, that tendonitis, that, in, that inflammation feeling um, and can cause issues with the rotator cuff. I mean, you're just limit, if you're limiting, if you have limited mobility anywhere, it's going to have uh, concerns and consequences. But that's one of the reasons or one of the things that could cause a specific issue if that's your situation. So that is one reason why bench pressing could be like, a, eh, maybe do more standing cable stuff or uh, maybe where it's more open. Um, I want to say open, uh, not open chain, but let's say from like a push up standpoint or from uh, different machines that might open up or on a ball or something where you have a little more range of motion. So that is one option, one thing to think about, right? These are not like written in stone. This is not that barbell bench is bad. These are just some concepts I want to get you thinking about and uh, to get the conversation going. So that, like I said, these are six reasons. Another one, risky for spotters. Now this can go both ways. So if you're in a professional standpoint, a, a professional setting, it's easier to quantify. It's easier to measure strength based on one object where you can quantify, okay, if the bar goes this high, it counts as a clean rep and this and so forth. It's easier for multiple people to spot one thing, for example. Uh, so you have multiple people spotting a bench. So if you're in a competition, you have one person behind and two people on the sides, at least one person on each side spotting the weight. So, you know, and, and strong people. When you're in a gym, when you're in a gym, a barbell bench can be very, very dangerous because very rarely in a gym do you have quality spotters, especially when you start lifting heavy. So a strike against not so much dumbbell, but against barbell, it's much more risky to do a barbell on your own and with a single spotter. So a lot of dudes think that you can go to a gym and, okay, I have a spotter. Can I get a spot? It's very, very difficult to spot someone on a bench, especially when they start benching heavy. So if you're benching 200, 225, or anything more than that, there, one spotter is nowhere near sufficient because you're not going to be leaning over, hunched over, and this person suddenly, randomly just gives out and drops the weight on their chest. It's going to take you four. You're going to go somersaulting over them, or you're going to throw your own back out trying to surprise deadlift 300 pounds. So spotting is an art. And understanding how to spot someone is very, very imp important. Most people spot ben uh, squats wrong. Um, you know, they they spot the bar and not the body. There's a, spe a specific way to spot someone that's doing a squat. And a lot of that involves almost looking like you're humping the person. So there's that gray area between how you spot and if, are you being professional and are you encroaching in personal space, but it still makes it the safest way. So when it comes to barbell bench in a gym, it's high risk. You're going to have some fucking tween spotting you when you're doing a max bench. There's no way you're safe. And the whole point of a spot is not to help you get the fucking rep is to make sure you don't break your face. And most people are dancing with the devil when it comes to breaking their face in the gym with a barbell. So dumbbells are safer because you can drop them off to the side. Rarely will you drop them on your own face. You're able to get out of the way. You're able to save yourself a little easier. Just drop your arms and drop the weight might land on someone's foot, but not your face. That's better. I once saw a guy break his clavicle doing bench press with one person's spot. There you go. Do I, should I go on? <coughs> In case closed. Ah, let's take a, let's take a moment, a little intermission. The Lee Bro Show. I like that, the Lee Bro Show. Down 27 pounds and getting ripped since joining your program. Just want to say thanks. 
That's a good intermission. You're welcome. That's fucking phenomenal. When did you, when did you start and where are you now with, um, what, what part of the program are you doing now? Down 27 pounds and getting ripped. Ripped. Uh, uh, uh. Just in time for summer. Just in time for summer, fam. It's ripped season. It's shredding season. Let's take a couple comments before I go on to the next part. Uh, Let's see. I like dumbbells better, but at home, my dumbbells only go to 90. So I'm going for reps now with them. That's good. That's good. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, if you're at home, dumbbells are more versatile. In, in many ways, I mean, you could use a dumbbell as a single, a oh, single weight as well. They're, they're different. There's, there's a lot more variety and it's a space saver, especially if you're working at home. Dumbbells are usually, you, you should have a good pair of dumbbells. Reverse grip is, re, uh, reverse grip bench is better for me with barbell versus dumbbells. You mean with a, yeah, well, uh, I agree. And that's, it's an easier wrist. It helps you keep your wrist in that position. Uh, Eric, what about the wrists? Eric Palma, what about the wrists when trying to raise the dumbbells instead of the regular barbell when lifting heavy? What do you mean about, what, what about the wrists? Are your wrists giving out? Do you feel like your wrists are, if you're giving out, then you need to increase wrist strength. You know, some isometrics could be beneficial. Doing some push-up holds, some high planks, you know, grip strength, forearm strength, and that could just be you're going heavier than you really can handle. It depends on what you mean, like lifting them up and having them fall on your face or something like that. Uh, Instagram going back to Libro like four months ago, just keeping my head down and putting in the work. It's always the quiet ones. It's always the quiet ones. And and we had this conversation last time uh, when I had, when I had Chase on the show, if you remember that episode, was that 720 something? Forgive me if I'm wrong, something like that. 723, I forget, might be right about that. Uh, Someone messaged me recently about it. So that's why the numbers, that number was popping into my head, but joined the program and put his head down and just fucking worked his ass off and comes back and, hey, I lost a hundred pounds. So I was like, who are you? Where have you been? It's always the quiet ones, the quiet ones that join, that come become part of the community and just put in all the freaking hard work. It's always the quiet ones. Is, is here, is here, or is there a proper form to lift the dumbbells to avoid getting hurt? There's a proper way to lift them to minimize getting hurt. You're always at a risk of getting hurt. I think that's kind of obvious, but I just have to reiterate that, that you're never, you're lifting heavy weights over your head. You can always drop that and have it smash on your face. A lot of people just bring them up here and lean back, but then you're in a, an extended position. You're putting a lot of pressure on the joint. I have them on my thighs and I kick them up into an extended position as I lean back on the bench. I don't often do for dumbbells. I usually do incline. I usually do a low incline. I rarely do flat dumbbell. If I do flat, I'll usually, I, I usually do incline pressing period. If I ever do flat, I'll do like a reverse bench. I don't do a lot of like straight flat pressing. Kim Fika bench press in a Smith machine takes out, um, even mare, and that's a typo of the instability, but damn, I always get the best pump since I hit the same place. Every rep thoughts with a similar dumbbell bench. What do you mean a similar, a similar dumbbell bench? So you like a Smith machine. I, I'm not against the Smith machine. I think the Smith is a great tool. If you use it properly, I think a lot of people just live on it. You can definitely get a great workout and use that. I just wouldn't use a Smith press dominantly. I would use a Smith press for chest if you have good shoulder stability, if it's towards the end of your workout, maybe if you're doing partial reps, right? So if you're going super heavy and you're trying to do like a strength or kind of break through like a plateau, you might want to load up the bar, put up the supports and do like a limited range of motion for like some, um, just some, I guess some neural recruitment. That's one of the reasons why a Smith press can be beneficial especially when you work out by yourself. I wouldn't recommend it if you can avoid it, but at the same time, if you're going heavy, you can put up support so you keep yourself safe. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like safety isn't the number one. If you're not getting hurt, then you can continue training. And it's more important that I'd rather you get like a, okay, you didn't get the best pump in the world or you could have gone a little bit heavier, but you're safe rather than go too heavy and break your face. 
combos with dumbbells or work the angle. I don't know what you mean, man. What do you mean combos with dumbbells? I, I'm just not sure exactly what your question is. So maybe reword the question, like rewrite the thing, but directly to what the question is. Cause you told me like some, you gave me like some background on the Smith, but then you're asking me a question. I'm not sure if they're related or not. Ken Becker, top fan. Thanks, Ken. I love that top fan thing. Love incline dumbbell bench, but I find it really hard to get the burn into the upper chest and not the shoulders. Same with incline flies. Usually people are the opposite. That's one of the reasons why incline bench, I think, got popular is because when you go on the incline, you clear the shoulder a lot and you take pressure off the shoulder. And a lot of people, once they have shoulder problems, instead of rather than fixing the problem at hand, rather than actually fixing the issue with the, with the shoulder, excuse me, they uh, just go to incline and then, ah, my shoulder doesn't hurt anymore because it opens up the shoulder joint. So you go to the incline bench and all of a sudden you don't have any pain in your shoulder anymore. And you go back to doing what you were doing and you never solve the issue. And eventually their shoulder hurts more and more when the rotator cuff keeps on getting inflamed. If you're having issues with the chest, if you're feeling it in your shoulders more, you're not activating your chest enough. One of the, my, uh, what's going to answer this question a little bit more is one of the next ones I have coming up. So let's go back to the list. Oh, let me see. Kim Fika in comparison with the Smith. I know, but I'm not sure what you mean. Combos with dumbbells. I mean, dumbbells are, you should be doing dumbbells. If you're not doing barbell bench, you should be, you should be doing dumbbell bench. You should be using dumbbells as your primary. Don't use your Smith as your primary. That could be an accessory to your dumbbell work. If that's what you're asking. What's up, Oliver? Okay. So let's go into, um, okay. So we, here's what we covered so far. Barbell locks you into position, wrists and your scapula one and two. And we talked about being risky for a spotter. So the next one I have, um, here is the anterior, anterior deltoid development. And this is going to be a short one, but, uh, Ken was it Ken Becker. The next one after this is going to be what you want to, uh, what you want to wait for. So the anterior deltoid development, a lot of times when you have, especially flat bench, you get a lot of, there's a lot of issue with the shoulder position. A lot of people keep their arms too perpendicular to the body. The shoulder joint is kept too perpendicular and too horizontal, too much like a T. And you put a lot of pressure on the actual shoulder jer uh, girdle or the shoulder joint itself. The limited, I would say, uh, horizontal ab, horizontal abduction of the of the humerus moving away from the body is limited and after it gets to a certain point at that high angle it limits the retraction so if you keep your elbows too high you put a lot of pressure on the shoulder joint itself so make sure you're dropping if you're doing bench and barbell make sure you're dropping your elbows closer towards the body and maybe not going uh, quite so wide with your grip and you can get a lot of anterior deltoid pressure and just a shoulder pressure but also anterior deltoid development and that's one of the reasons why i don't have a lot of pressing in my programming because you get so much from the chest and you can always throw in some front raises you don't necessarily need to keep on pressing 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 and causing a lot of irritation and compression up in that area we do a lot of pressing already for chest and if you're activating everything properly some front raises will be fine you don't need to do so much overhead pressing that brings me to the next part which is the limited adduction now adduction especially when it comes to the arm is bringing the arms together so the chest coming to the midline of the body is called adduction you're adding to the midline you're bringing the humerus together the humeri so you're bringing the upper arms together when you're doing a chest movement when you're on a barbell you can't bring your hands together you could try to telescope the bar and try to pull and squeeze the bar together but you're going to get limited ab Christ, limited adduction, the arms coming towards the center. So with dumbbells or with bands or with cables or with sliders or with different angles and different tension, you can actually get more full range of motion with the chest. So when you're doing like a pinch press, and I did some of these demos uh, in a workout that'll come out uh, and then within the next week or so, uh, yesterday that I recorded with a lot of like, you know, dumbbell pinch press and doing close grip dumbbell pressing and doing things that and flies and cable crossovers and pec deck and things that trigger the chest and pressure the chest to work more in an adduction style environment. That's what's important. And when you have a barbell, you're going to get a lot less of that, which can limit your 
activation of the muscle and limit your development and make you not happy. Sad face. The last one is just the classic focus of a barbell bench. I almost feel like if you are a big barbell bencher, that you are living in another time. I almost feel like you're a dinosaur. Now, I'm very big on the basics, and you've heard me talk so much about stick to the basics, stick to the basics, keep it simple, stick to the basics. I do believe in sticking to the basics. I also believe in updating and be and modernizing your training and understanding where you want to go rather than where you've been or where people have been in general. So you need to be progressing your thought in terms of training and don't get stuck in the past. Don't get stuck on a basic exercise when it can be improved. Now, of course, chest is chest and pushing is pushing. I just don't think that a barbell bench should be a main component of your upper body work. I think dumbbell benching is fine. I think pressing movements are fine. I think there are many, many dynamic exercises and uh, much more versatile and safe exercises rather than a classic bench press. The reason why the bench press got so popular is because it's a very, it's a classic method of measuring upper body strength. You know, how much can you push? And it's easy to test. It's easy to test and quantify. So a upper body, so a bench press, that's why it's done in football and, you know, strength training competitions. It's an easy thing to measure. That's why it's one of those major lifts that's, you know, that's why dumbbell pressing isn't quantified because how low did he go? Did he go lower with the right arm or the left arm? Was his hands rotated in, out? When you're doing a, a squat a certain way, there's certain rules. We're doing a bench, there's certain rules. And if you, you know, make enough rules and enough regulations, you can measure people against a norm. So it doesn't mean that someone who does a squat on that, you know, uh, with those rules in that competition, that they're the strongest person in the world. It doesn't mean that it just means in that instance with those rules, with that method on that day, that person lifted the most weight or something like that. So there's just a, you know, th this classic mentality and this old school mentality of not updating training and getting stuck in a rut. And that's, and it's not specific. It's it's really specific to the bench press. It's really specific to the bench press because there are so many other methods to stimulate the chest fibers. You know, it's not like the squat. It's not like the deadlift where you have these exercises that are just, you know, that's just a real basic human movement. Pushing is too, but it's a little bit less of a, you know, a basic movement than it is to squat and to stand up. You know, the arbitrary like bar bench. I think, you know, it's a little bit more dynamic because we have, we work a lot more unilaterally with our upper body than we do with our lower body. In many cases, you know, we'll stand up with, the, with two legs with our, we're right arm dominant. I know we're left arm or left leg dominant, but we're a little bit more, I don't know. I just feel like we're a little bit more unilateral upper body wise rather than lower body. We're more like a pyramid. So when it comes to upper body, we need to be a little bit more a little bit more individualized, a little more customized, a little bit more unilateral as well. And the dumbbells help with that, with proprioception, with stabilizing two weights rather than one and so forth. Anthony, what it do, man? What up, bruh? What home ab workouts would you suggest? Let me just mentally download ab workouts onto your brain right now. What would I suggest? I would suggest doing yoga. If you're not practicing yoga already, there's your ab workout right there. Start practicing yoga and then worry about other stuff. That's always the foundation. If you're lifting weights and practicing yoga, then you can start worrying about other things. That's what I would suggest if you're doing something at home. Don't waste your time on ab routines if you're not practicing yoga. That'll help you more with everything in your life. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, so, oh yeah, so, so that was the part that was going to help you. Um, Ken, when you're saying you, you don't feel the burn, that was the part, the limited adduction on Facebook. That's what I was talking about before. The limited adduction with the barbell bench. So you might prefer some other exercise to activate the fibers. And things like the pinch press, things like that squeezing that horizontal adduction with the humerus, with the chest, that's what the chest is for. The chest is for that squeeze, holding things between the palms. So when I did the watermelon, that chesticle challenge I posted on Facebook, that is, that is literally that motion, squeezing the hands together to hold the watermelon between your upper arms. Am I uh, Kim Fika? Am I imagining things? 
or does an inclined dumbbell press result in more soreness due to the extra range of motion or due to the extra stretch? Uh, maybe. It depends also on how used, used you are to the, to the motion. Don't forget the chest has different fibers too. When you're on an incline, you're going to get a little bit more of, a, of an activation of those clavicular fibers a little bit more. The same thing with a reverse bench. That's why a reverse grip bench gets you so much because you really get those, um, the upper chest, you really get the clavicular fibers because you get so much shoulder extension. And you take the bicep more out of the equation because when you supinate to grab for a reverse bench, you're also shortening the bicep. So it takes a little bit of the mechanical advantage away from the biceps because it shortens it from the beginning of the motion. So you kind of puts a little bit more into the upper chest. Ryan Moorefield on Facebook. I like to pre-exhaust the chest with five to 12 cable flies, incline cable, pre-exhaust. That's a hell of a pre-exhaust, bro. Five sets. That's a lot of, you're exhausting. <laughs> Activates. Doing flies and doing that, like, yeah, doing adduction movements are great for activation. Just don't fatigue it. Don't pre-exhaust, but don't fatigue Action your back. I would stick to incline pressing. I would stay away from the flat. I would try reverse. I would try doing more pinch press, doing more cable work, doing more activation, yoga, floor, uh, the prone cobras, prone press, activate your middle and lower traps. If you're not feeling it in your chest, it's because of that upper postural distortion. It's because your body can't neurally activate those fibers. And that usually comes between length tension relationships at the starting point of the movement. So if a muscle is too shortened, or inhibited, or you know, there's adhesions in the fascial connective tissue, and there's a lot of different reasons. Coordination period. So, if a muscle is shortened or inhibited neurally, and your body doesn't have coordination to really fire that muscle because it's not used to it, it's going to be hard to integrate it to a multi-joint collaborative movement. That's why there's activation techniques and that's why a lot of therapy and a lot of corrective exercise is really slow and controlled to try to target one single muscle because you can't just do a multiple joint movement and say hey recruit this muscle use this one too your body doesn't understand it's going to veer off and focus on the more dominant muscles that already exist so in other words activation and doing these corrective exercises turns on the weaker muscles so they can be part of the integration team and a bench press a multi-joint movement is going to be coordinating a lot of different muscles together. So you can't just say, okay, we're going to do a bench press, but now I want my middle and lower traps to be working. So you're going to pinch your shoulder blades back and down and press. You can't just activate it like that. You have to fire those muscles. You have to teach your brain to control those muscles. And then there's a certain progression to integrate muscles into a full movement because your body will always default to what it knows best. So you can do like a couple sets on corrective exercise and go over to the bench press and your body, those muscles will just shut right back down because you're used to doing things a certain way. It's hard to break old habits. That's why corrective exercise. And that's why those of you that are joining my programs inside Soul Normous X, you know that a lot of it's balance, single leg stuff and shit that you've never seen. You're like, what the fuck is this? And there's a reason why there's, you're using very little weight on the foundational levels of my program because you don't need weight. You need balance. You need proprioception. You need coordination. You need, you know, literally intra muscular coordination. You need your actual muscle itself within itself to fire properly rather than intermuscular coordination, rather than multiple muscles communicating. It's like countries, it's like the UN, right? It's like different countries interacting rather than having laws within a country. So the United States deals with other countries. It's like the United States dealing with you know inner dealings and then you have different organs and different areas right different muscles and those are the different states and then you have you know provinces and it, it keeps on going lower so you have you need to have everything coordinated together for it to work properly and if the stuff inside the country is a mess it's hard for this country to talk to other countries and that's kind of that's kind of what we're dealing with now isn't it kind of like politics the body right see how the body just relates to everything even global politics is it a myth that you can mold your muscle into a certain fit? 
than your genes has left for you. Probably. It sounds like a myth. Anything, anything that's too good to be true probably is and usually is. You can mold your muscle into a certain fit. You mean shape? No. I mean, you, you, can, you can only develop your muscles so much. If you have short muscle bellies, you have short muscle bellies. If you have long muscle bellies, you have long muscle bellies. You're not going to alter your like how many muscles, you know, the shape of your muscles, essentially. I mean, if you take anabolic steroids, you'll maximize more than what you would normally, but you're not just going to create different shape than you would have had naturally. Like a small guy with like shorter biceps isn't going to have like long, full biceps all of a sudden. It's hard to say. It's hard to quantify that, but shape is usually dictated by, you know, the amount of fibers present and, the tenderness insertions and how long the tendon is. Some people have shorter muscle bellies and than others. Phil Metcalf. Oh, sorry, bro. I saw this comment before, but I didn't get to it yet. What kind of yoga do you do? I do a, a bunch of different kinds. I love yin. Yin is a very passive gravity style yoga. I also like vinyasa and hatha yoga. But in terms of like how restorative yin is, I usually like to complement my training, my strength training practice with yin yoga. Uh, 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 uh. what's the best bench exercise to get rid of loose skin on chest from losing weight there is none loose skin is loose skin it's not something that's going to tighten back up and i think everyone i know a lot of you have loose skin but it's going to be there skin doesn't just like recoil like a wire uh, so if it's really stretched out it's probably just going to stay there just to be honest you'd have to go to you'd have to go get it checked out professionally by someone, you know, by like a plastic surgeon and see if it's something that can go away. You can try creams, you can try the things like elastin and collagen, but from all my experience with clients and massive weight loss, you know, extra skin, just if it's overstretched, it's overstretched. Yeah. Snip, snip. I mean, you can build muscle and shape and it might be able to tighten some stuff around it, but the skin's going to be, you know, I still, I have stretch marks. I have stretch marks. I gained a lot of muscle in a short period of time. I got stretch marks on my arms and under my, you know, it's, it happens. Some people have from losing, from gaining a lot of weight. Some people have from gaining muscle and weight, you know, quickly too. It's just the skin can't grow fast enough and extend around the new tissue fast enough. That's why women with pregnancy, all of a sudden you go from like nothing to a huge belly in six, eight, you know, six, seven months. That's why women get stretch marks because it's just it, the expansion is so fast. It's not normal for the body. I mean, it is for, for women, but it's also not normal to be a super low body fat percentage too. I think that affects a lot of women too, you know, having not eating the right foods, you know, it will affect how the skin quality can be in, in growing. But when you talk too much about skin and that kind of, you know, you, you start getting out of my scope of, you know, practice and you know that you start getting more medical when you get to that kind of stuff. Is there a good warm up for mobility or is it not required? Good question. The mobility is the warm up. So, for example, in Solnormous X, the the mobility round two or the mobility that is the workout. So, the mobility is part of the warm up. Now, a mobility, as the way I have it organized, the way my mobility workouts are, it's not necessarily an increase in body temperature. I would still recommend getting your heart rate up and getting a little sweat going for five or 10 minutes before mobility, but it is something you can do at home. You don't have to like be sweating and out of breath, but getting your body temperature up before any kind of like physical activity is always beneficial. Yin yoga. So where would I go to start yoga? I know I have to work into it. Well, yoga is for all levels. Now there are more advanced yoga classes. So if you do something locally, you want to make sure it's a beginner yoga class. And if you're watching or listening and you're going to take a, a local yoga class, just keep in mind that yo, there's many different types of yoga. There's many different instructors. So maybe you're not jiving or you're not meshing with the instructor. Don't give up on yoga just because you didn't like one class or you didn't like one person's approach or you were nervous or you weren't able to relax because it's a, it's a practice, but give it a chance. Give it a chance. Try a different instructor. Try a different studio or give the same one you know, a try two or three times because Sometimes like I, I've actually had classes with instructors. I didn't like their voice. And it was kind of after like a week or two, I loved it. I loved it. Loved the instructor, loved the flow. I felt great. It was more like me, myself, had being frustrated with the actual mover. 
it was a change. Like her voice was different and it kind of like, eh, I just didn't like it. And then I ended up really enjoying it. So it's really a lot of times your perspective and your, how you perceive things. It's not necessarily the other person. Just, just keep in mind that there's different types of yoga and different instructors, and you might just get a better vibe from a different class or a different studio, for example. Go check out the yoga section in Solnormous X. That too, Zach. Yeah. So those of you that are, um, another reason for Sol Solnormous X. Thanks, Vince. Yeah. For those of you that are interested in yoga classes, part of what Solnormous X is, is regular yoga classes. So there's a whole library of full yoga classes on my Solnormous X. So it's much more than a program. It's an entire fitness platform that I'm always uploading new workouts and new trainings and new classes and master classes and workshops and instructional videos. So there's a ton of stuff. SolnormousX.com if you're new to watching and you haven't heard that before. So SolnormousX.com if you're interested in checking that out. Steve Heffelfinger, I'm new to your program. Very informative, super uplifting. Kudos to you. Keep up the awesomeness you do for people. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that mucho. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. I really appreciate the turnout today. Great questions. Everyone loves to talk about chesticles. Thoughts on Bulgarian light training. Oh, thank you for defining it because I don't know what that is. Maxing out on an exercise every single day. Uh, it's kind of like, that kind of reminds me of Dorian Yates, how he used to train to super intense, like a couple sets, but all out. Maxing out on an exercise. What do you mean by maxing out? I don't know how they define it. I've never heard of Bulgarian light training. So does that mean that you just do bench press until failure? You do like maximum repetitions, like as much as you can do one repetition max, or is it just you pick one exercise and just crush it on Monday? Like one exercise, one body part. Well, the maxing out can be, uh, well, there's a one, you can explain that. I don't know if it's Misael, M-I-C-A-E-L on YouTube, or if you want to define exactly how they define it. Jonathan Hernandez on, on Facebook. And then I'll get back to Instagram in a second. Uh, let's see. Jonathan Hernandez would reverse incline dumbbell press work your mid chest muscles. When you do reverse palms up, you're going to, depending on your wrist position, you're going to notice that when you get your, your elbows and your humerus closer together, you're going to feel more of that pinch in the center of the chest. So as long as you're getting mechanically and you're starting to get a little bit more of the full contraction of those sternal fibers, you'll get some more middle portion of the chest. You'll get some more mechanical activity. There isn't like, let's say a middle chest muscle, but there are fibers that pull in that direction. So when you start learning about the human body and you look at the direction of where the fibers run, the direction of where the fibers run is where the contractions are taking place. They're not going like up and down like this. So when you realize that the fibers run in different patterns, you start to move the arm in different patterns. You start to isolate. That's why these, some of these workouts you might see or exercise you might see are really weird, but they're functional. You can, you can do literal, almost like a shrug where you're holding a dumbbell and kind of pulling the arm to the center to get the clavicular head of the pectoralis. Like you can do like, it's almost like a little protraction and humeral internal rotation with a little bit of some scapular elevation, like you're getting some clavicular fibers because there's a clavicular portion. So you can really, you know, tweak and trigger these little tiny areas of muscles just mechanically, because that's why another, that's one of those reasons for the barbell bench. You limit your range of motion. You limit the angles you can hit. When you start using cables and bands, that's why you have different tools in your toolbox. And if you're trying to develop and look for aesthetics rather than strength, rather than functional training, there's a, a lot of different adaptations, right? So you have to think about, are you trying to look a certain way? Are you trying to get stronger? Are you trying to get better at a specific exercise? Are you trying to get a similar workout at home to what you do, um, for example, at the gym? Like there's a lot of different, I mean, there's a lot of different goals you can have when it comes to training chest. So you have to understand what you're trying to accomplish first and then go from there. Like, what are you trying to, are you re being realistic? What equipment do you have? What's your goal? What are you trying to do? And then, okay, let's see, is this workout 
or this angle or this exercise be effective for that? Sultan Mukal, dumbbells versus barbell. Yeah, that's what we've been talking about. I would just recommend if, you just, if you're just showing up now to re-listen to this episode because we went over a bunch of those. Yeah, a lot of those questions were answered, so you'd like this episode for sure. Lena on Facebook, Dash, do you know any contraindication in the practice? Ooh, good word. Contraindication in the practice of yoga for a person who has scoliosis due to a small difference in the length of legs. Uh, do I know specifically uh, which which poses? Um, actually, what's interesting is Alex in um, the uh, instructor in Swarmus X for the yoga classes. Uh, she had uh, scoliosis and she was dealing with that. Uh, so um, I, I want to have her on the show and, and, and to talk and discuss about that because off the top of my head, I haven't personally dealt with a lot of a lot of people you know, in terms of yoga specifically with scoliosis, but I'm sure there is, I'm sure there's certain ways or things that you want to uh, do. She uses a lot of props in her classes and she likes props a lot because that's a, that helps you uh, get into certain tissues and get into certain alignments that you can't do with just the body alone. So that's going to be very individualized too. you know, your specific situation rather than someone else. So yeah, I'll have to expedite that conversation so you can especially with standing poses yeah i hear you i hear you I, i'd love to have her speak more um astutely on that because of her personal experience i mean do you have any do you have any discomfort like is it just, is it uncomfortable or you're just thinking psychologically okay i'm not balanced or even left and right in terms of because of my spinal misalignment like are you concerned or are you actually feeling something that you know, is, is painful or is uncomfortable. Uh, let's see on YouTube, we're going back to this Bulgarian stuff. Let's take bench as an example. You do a single rep max one day and the next day you try to up the weight. Maxing out on exercise. See, okay. So you're talking about a single exercise and you're doing it every day. The next day, try to up the weight. I don't like it. I'm not saying it doesn't work or I don't know. I've never heard of maxing every day. I don't like that. So and you you only ask me my thoughts. That's what I think. Like what what what's your purpose? Why? Why? That's what I always ask. And I'm not saying you're doing it or you want to do it. Maybe you're just curious as to what I think about it. I always wonder why. Why why would you do that? What's the point? Because you want to get stronger. Why? I'm like a five-year-old when it comes to fitness. Cause I think so many people want things in fitness because of what they think society wants. A lot of people want a six pack, want to have six pack ads because that's been put on a pedestal in this country and in, on Instagram and stuff like that. A lot of people want X, Y, and Z because they see other people and they think that they should have that. Cause that's what other people would admire if they had that. I really do think that's what, so I'm always curious as to why people want why do you want to one rep max to be stronger why so that girl's gonna like you so you feel better about yourself as a person why there comes a point where strength just doesn't okay what's like five pounds more is it worth your shoulder health is it worth i know that's why i stopped going so heavy it just what's the point what's the point oh i like lifting heavy but there's a there's a point where it's too heavy there's a point where it's just a diminishing return Search for Arab Bugin. No, no, I'm not going to search him. Sorry, man. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go search that dude. If you have a question, I gave you my opinion. I really don't, I really don't care so much about whatever that is, to be honest. I don't even know what, I've never heard of, well, that, that's a long name. Bugenhagen. What does he do? Uh, let me take another question. Honey clay pot. Will yoga fix knee pain due to flat feet and tight hips? It can, it may. When you start saying the word pain, that becomes, uh, something that we can't really discuss because pain means you need medical attention. So if you're talking, I mean, it depends on what is causing the knee pain and your knee discomfort. So I'll talk generally, you know, I mean, it will fix and it can make your pain go away if, if the flat feet and the tight hips is what's directly causing the knee pain. And 
which it very could like very likely could be. So if you have flat feet, you're having more knee valgus, your Q angle, the angle of your humerus or your humerus, your femur is essentially going, you know, pointing in towards the midline more at a more extreme angle. So you're getting a lot more stress on the knee can cause inflammation and, and, and chronic pain. Tight hips is a very vague term. Most people have tight hips, but what is tight in your hips? So probably the glutes are not activating properly. Your hamstrings are too tight. Your calves are very tight. Your ankles tight. You know, your lateral gastrocnemius is tight. Your soleus is tight. Everything's freaking tight and locked up. And then maybe you have, you know, a weakened popliteus muscle and it's not unlocking. Who knows? Who knows? So the main thing is you can't squat without pain and that makes it a serious concern for you. So I would first off, I would highly recommend getting involved with yoga and also corrective exercise and stabilization style training. Um, I would also recommend checking out my YouTube channel because on the training playlist, I talk about glute activation with the lateral tube walking. Now, if that's part of the issue, it will generally help with knees caving in, which can lead to flat feet and can be a component of that. But the lateral tube walking can activate the gluteus medius and help reinvigorate, so to speak, your anterior tibialis and help improve the arch support. So I don't know if you're wearing heels a lot, if you wear sneakers or elevated heels a lot, if you're hips or probably have a probably have an anterior pelvic tilt. I mean, just the common stuff. So it can absolutely, it can absolutely help and improve. I mean, yoga is going to improve someone. I, I really can confidently say yoga will improve everyone's life to some extent. I'm not going to say yoga is going to cure your pain because you can't just say that shit. You can't say that yoga is going to fix your pain. Uh, you can't say that because it's not true. Could it? Sure. If that if that pain is as a result of something that yoga can, can fix. I mean, if you got into a nasty car accident, yoga doesn't necessarily make the pain go away. It could increase your mobility, increase your stability, increase your risk of getting injured again. Or, but you know, sometimes injuries or ailments or things are just exist for something that you can't cure with just physical work. But yoga has a lot more than just physical. The benefits of yoga goes beyond just the physical stretching. So that's the beauty of it. How often or how much do you try to do the best exercises differently without losing sight of your gains? Your max rep or endurance? You've been asking a lot of like cryptic questions. How often or how much do you try to do the best exercises differently without losing sight of your gains? Your max rep or endurance? Well, we, we're talking about max reps and endurance. Those are two different variables. So if you're, if you're talking about strength and endurance, those, those two are not like on the same path. Like if you're improving your endurance, you're going to be losing some strength in, me, in most cases. How often do I mix things up? Do you mean how often do I add variety? It depends. Like right now I'm adding some variety. Most people add too much variety too often. You don't need to change things up. Like if you're trying to be consistent, you don't need to change things up any more than like maybe three to six weeks. You can keep doing the same stuff, literally the same stuff, literally the same exercise, the same order. You can, you don't have to change things that frequently. I think that's the reason why people don't see a lot of changes. When you go do chest, for example, everyone's changing everything they do for chest every freaking week. They're trying to crush their chest. Yeah, I did max pushups today. I did pushups for 30 minutes and then I did, you know, a, a re, you know, a chest burnout. And the next time, yeah, I did a max rep and then I did some like, you know, cable flies and they went home. And then the next time they did incline dump, like you're doing random shit for chest every fucking week. You don't need to do random stuff every fucking week. You don't need to do a completely random workout. You need to stick to the same order and the same exercise and, and like improve on them. Let your body get used to seeing the same thing a couple weeks in a row and let it actually get more skilled. And a lot of times you might not be seeing progress because you're not getting skilled enough in a movement. It's not just strength, it's coordination. It's how well you can execute the movement. It's not just how much weight you're pushing. That doesn't mean you're doing better. That doesn't mean you're doing better just because you're, oh, you went up five pounds, but are you moving through the actual motion better is your exercise execution better harry gonzalez welcome bro first timer 
Thanks for your opinions. Need a lot more live feeds as this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for your opinion. They are my opinions. Indeed, they are. Indeed, they are. And let me reiterate that. All right, don't forget, as much education and experience I have, these are my opinions. I will not willing you lead, willing, I will not willingly lead you down the wrong direction. Just sharing my experiences. So these are some things to think about. Remember, these are six reasons that we went over today. Six reasons to leave the barbell bench. They aren't reasons to stop doing it completely. Just reformulate. If you're a barbell bench hound, gives you something to think about. Maybe you should take a step back from the bar. Can a heavier body weight give you leverage in a bench press? It can, if that body weight means more muscle mass, it can mean more absolute strength, doesn't necessarily mean more relative strength. Absolute strength means how much someone can lift, relative means relative to their body mass. So if you have a 150 pound person benching 300 pounds and you have a 300 pound person benching 300 pounds, relatively the 150 pound person is stronger because they're benching twice their body weight. More body weight usually means more muscle, which means more strength. I just want to say, since I began to follow you, you are top two best individual inspirational. Top two? Nice. Who am I up there with? Who's the other? Who, who's my partner? Who's my partner in the top two? But thank you. I appreciate the support. Good questions today, man. This guy gets me to the gym, period. <laughs> Gone the Don. As long as I get you to the gym, that's kind of like my job's done, right? It's a good podcast. As long as you're listening to it on the way to the gym while you're in the gym, if I get you to the fucking gym, if I get you to the gain train, the steel factory, the pump house, if I get you there, job done. Job done. And job well done, might I add. A lot of people give up before they can fully adapt to the movements. They can't handle the soreness. They can't handle the soreness and they also don't have patience. The Rock. Oh, shit. El Rock. El Rock. That guy is a fucking beast. A lot of people give up. A lot of people give up on a lot of things. They can't handle the soreness. They can't handle the monotony. I think a lot of it's the monotony because we get such, we get such an assault every day, right? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you get so many different things in your feed and you're seeing things and you're getting ads and you're getting all this, you know, bright flashy shit in your face all the time. So you do the same thing more than once in the gym, consecutive workouts. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm going to adapt. I'm going to, I'm going to be the same forever. I'm not going to change. I'm hitting a plateau. It's like, yo, you did two chest workouts, bro. Like give it some fucking time. You just started this program or you just started training like this. Like give it some time. <laughs> give it, give it, give it a moment, right? Can you give it a week? Give it two weeks. Like give it, give it, give it a moment. That's a big, that's a big part of it too. That's a big part of it too. It's just the lack of patience. Everyone wants something fast, right? Everyone wants that quick result. It doesn't happen. Top one for me. Michelle, Michelle knows what buttons to push. Thanks for fluffing my pillow. Appreciate it. Big Johnson. <laughs> Thanks for the motivation. You're welcome. Hey, doing good this morning? Yes, we are. We are doing great. And we're actually coming up on an hour. So Instagram is about to shut off and um, I'll use this opportunity. Probably be wrapping it up. So I'm not sure if I'll start it again, but when it shuts off Instagram, um, I'll probably just hit the live button again and we'll close it off. There's no quick fix. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Indeed. Indeed, sir. I find the routine of it comforting. And I had that experience with Bikram yoga because Bikram yoga is repetitive flow. It's the same every time, same every class. And you actually find that you can focus better and you can adapt more because you can zone in and you know what's coming and you can see the improvements because you see, okay, last time I did this pose in this order and I wasn't getting as far and now I'm getting further. I'm getting a little more flexible. I'm getting a little more mobile or now I'm a little bit stronger. You start to notice patterns when you change things all the time. You can't measure it. It's like when someone asks me, how many calories should I be eating? Should I be increasing my calories? So I say, well, how many calories are you eating now? Uh, I don't know. 
then how the fuck can I answer that question? You don't even know what you're eating, jabroni. It's the same thing. How can you change what you don't know what you're currently doing? I'll, I'll, I'll turn this back on. Hold on a second. Instagram is done. We broke Instagram again. All right, go live again. Kobe Morris way off to ah, we're, we're, we're coming down to the, we're in the back nine of the show or the back three. So any questions, fine. Way off, the, we don't have way off topic. We, we stayed on topic pretty well today. How do you find out if your grass fed beef is grass finished? <laughs> you take their word for it unless you go to the farm. You know, honestly, what can I say? You know, you look at reviews, you look it up, you try to find any bad publicity, you call the place, you go and check it out. You know, you're not working there 24 seven. How do you really know a hundred percent? You know, it's one thing to be skeptical. You also have to have a certain level of trust. And I just think with the food industry and with the fitness industry, I think people are, and that's what social media does. That's what the internet does. That's what the phones do. I don't know if you've noticed, I don't know if anyone's noticed just with stuff in general, have you noticed how everything in the world, like customer service, have you realized that literally, not that you can get away with anything, but you realize how good customer service has gotten in the past like five years? Anyone ever, anyone have any personal experience? I know you might say, no, I called someone and I had like, you know, an issue. I'm talking about just like from, a, from like a business standpoint, you know, return policies and just like, you know, taking care of things and Amazon, like things are very, very efficient because everything's exposed, right? Everything's got reviews. You got Google reviews. You got Facebook reviews. You have, everyone's got a voice. So if you want to find out some information or something dirty is going on, shit gets out. 70 years ago, when people were taking studies that didn't make sense and promoting them like gospel and sending our country down this fucking shit spiral of sucking down vegetable oil and garbage food, you know, if we had Twitter, maybe it wouldn't have gotten that far. But whatever you read, whatever you saw, or whatever you saw on the radio, right? We're talking that time period, right? Whatever you saw on your black and white four inch TV in the living room that looked like a, a dresser. Right. When those old box TVs, right. The two channels you got. So whatever fucking Johnny Carson said, you know, on the tonight show, that was bond. That's like the, that was the, the world you lived in. That was the, that was the news. That was the latest. That was the news. I'm legit. I'm serious. So now everyone, all of a sudden. It's like, there's so much research. Everyone says there's so much gray area. Everyone's saying one thing and everyone's saying another thing. Yeah, but they were all, no one just, everyone just had a, no one had a voice. Some of these people were doing this for years. You just didn't have a voice. You didn't have a way to get out there. Now everyone's got a, a soapbox, right? Look, in a time where this bearded fucking jabroni, right? This bearded guy, this bearded guy, I have a podcast. You know, I'm able to share my story. I'm able to share my experience with all of you. I didn't have this ability. 30 years ago, I was barely alive too, but you know, not everyone could do this. You needed an entire radio station. You need to be in the industry. It wasn't like any single one of you can just fucking start a podcast today. If you wanted to, you realize that, right? Anyone can do it. So, you know, cream always rises to the top. I'm trying to stay objective, man. I'm trying to stay objective. I'm trying to not have all the answers, but lead you help. I'm trying to get to the answers with you. All right. I'm just trying to catch everyone up to speed, get on my level, make sure I just vomit all my information out there, get out there as much as possible. And then everyone can kind of level up and then we're all okay. Now we're, let's move forward. You know, we're all in this together, right? Whether I've met you or not, in a way we know each other. We're family in that internet sort of way, but in reality, we're all in the same, we're all, we're all in the same world. So literally, if you find out something like this is not grass fed, fucking shout it from the rooftop, message me, send me a research study, show me. I'm fine with it. I mean, and look, if you find out new information, then you go with that new information. Wow. This is a new fact that just came out. They just discovered that. Holy shit. They just found a new molecule that does what? Oh, wow. It might restructure how we look at some things. Fine. Let's adjust and adapt. Move on. 
like for years, right? It's like the the cigarette thing. Four out of five doctors recommend camel. Smoking's bad for you. Oh shit. The people found out we got pissed and then it's common knowledge now. You know, we just move on. We learn and we move on and we, but now with the internet, we have the ability to be more objective. We don't have to listen to someone telling us what to do. We don't have to listen to one person telling us this is how you're supposed to eat. We have choices. And that's why I'm always talking about responsibility. You have the responsibility to make better choices and you can't blame it on your doctor. You can't blame it on, you know, what you were taught in school. You don't need school to know what's good for you. You have all these methods of figuring it out. You just have to put in work and you have to take out your phone and use it for something constructive rather than just flipping through fucking Instagram. You can use your phone for actually learning, believe it or not. Edumacation. Hello, fam. Hello. Make a copy. Don't trust S1. What's S1? Anyone? Mm -mm. What do you, let's see. Why do you think people in general use excuses as to being tired to not exercise, whether it be at the beginning of the day or end? I always try to equate as standing water becoming stagnant as poisonous as it relates to the body. What's your opinion? I think it comes down to the fundamental. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. That's like inertia and momentum. And it's legit. Oh, S1. It's legit. Momentum. Habit. People want to be lazy because they have, they're in the habit of being lazy. If a person is busy, they get in the habit of being busy. You start having a long commute. After a while, the commute seems shorter. If you are getting up early, it feels really fucking early at the beginning. And then after a while, you get used to getting up early. It's habit. And it's habit. People use excuses because people don't like change. Anything that's uncomfortable, whether it's schedule wise, whether it's food wise, whether it's doing anything that's out of the ordinary, they're going to essentially complain. People have an ego. They don't like to be proven wrong. They don't like to be, they don't like to go against the grain. People like to follow the pack. People want to be accepted. So if the pack is screaming to eat crap food and don't go there, where do you puss? Blah, blah, blah. People are going to side for being accepted. And that's why there are so few outliers in society. You know, we relish the change. We relish the, the breath of fresh air. As humans, we like to see other people breaking the mold and stepping outside the lines. And, you know, you like watching me talk about this shit and calling people jabronis and calling out the scams and making fun of people and telling everyone to shut the fuck up and stop being a puss and just do it. You like watching me do it, but a lot of people don't like doing it themselves. So I'm fine doing the dirty work. It has to be done. But people like, people like to watch other people succeed rather than put the work in themselves. I'm just here to show you that you can do it yourself. Everyone's capable. There's always like, oh, they can do it, but not me. They're no different. I'm no different than you. I'm a human being. I just started doing things a certain way and made certain commitments to myself and promises and, and build discipline with fitness, with business, with everything. People will most times choose the path of least resistance. That's not a bad strategy. Even when you have a, a goal and a focus, you have to focus on your strengths, what you're good at. But yeah, I mean, in terms of change or stay the same, agreed. Total body awareness this morning and yin hamstring tonight. That's a hell of a day. I'm doing yoga today too. I was going to do a workout too. I was going to do a lower body workout today too, but I also want to do yoga. Ansel Keys, dumb fuck. <laughs> Hell yeah, everyone's getting amped. Uh, let's see what's going on on Instagram. So fam, uh, a couple a couple things. Uh, those of you that are not yet on the, you'll be getting a Daily Swole Club message today with another tutorial. So if you're not yet a part of the Daily Swole Club, that's my free messaging VIP list. So if you want to be a part of that, go to Facebook and send me a message and just say, hey, you'll get a response that uh, sends you a button so you can join. It's 100% free and you'll get messages throughout the week with um, you know special links to certain YouTube videos, but also individual unique breakdowns, exercise breakdowns, recipes, you know, st training strategies and tips. So go on to Facebook Messenger, send Papa Swolio a message and just say what up and make sure you follow the instructions to join the Daily Swole Club. 
And those of you that are in Swolenormus X, you have that new Swole Vault release and um, you still have that new yoga video, that new yin for shoulders. If you haven't tried that yet, it's an amazing yoga class in your yoga class section. So make sure to check out the updates tab on SwolenormusX.com in order to see the latest updates on the site. And if you're interested in the yoga classes and my programs, master classes, instructionals, everything, check it out, SwolenormusX.com. Uh, right after this, I'm going to do some voiceovers and some uh, for some more vault videos and some more programming. So those of you that are in X, you have a lot of great stuff coming. I'm on content overload, so I'm amped. And I'll be posting some more stuff on YouTube as well, driving while gaining uh, that I want to edit and also some new training content, some exercise tutorials on YouTube as well. So check me out everywhere. I'll see you around the bend. Peace, McGee's fam. I'll see you tomorrow for 7.55 and a deuce McGoo's. Papa Swilio. Oh, 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 out. Later, fam. See you tomorrow for 7.55. Later. Thanks for watching, fam. Peace out. Peace, peace, peace. Mm. They may, may the gains be with you.